St. John's this is the place where grace abounds. And grace abounds for us. And we've got to milk it for uh, this last Sunday of Easter. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. It is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the final Sunday of Easter. Uh, we will enter the, uh, the Pentecost season very soon. Uh, so, before we get started, a couple things reflecting his life. New member class coming up June 17th and 18th, starting on uh, that Friday at 7 o'clock, going into the next morning. Uh, a sign-up sheet is available on the North X table. This is for anyone who desires to become a member of St. John's, or members who would like a little, you know, um, a little refresher on the basics. You'd like to come and just check it out. Uh, or if you're just interested in what uh, maybe we believe, teach, and confess, this class is definitely for you. No pressure. Come hang out. Sign up sheet again on the Narthex table. Congregational meeting, just to put that on your radar, Sunday, June 26th, immediately following the divine service. And this week we are finishing up in Bible study the book of Ruth. All right, what's going to happen? Uh, Ruth made her move. Naomi, they, they made their, their big plan. Uh, it's all in Boaz's hands now. What's going to happen? I know you can't wait. So join us for Bible study this week, 11 on Tuesday and 7 on Thursday night. Um, my apologies. I'm not getting out an email yesterday with the, uh, uh, the bulletin and reflecting his light. I don't know what was happening to our email. It was saying that there was a virus attached to it. And I wasn't about to send y'all a virus. I wasn't able to send anything, so I gave up. I, I did. I gave up. I said, no, I'm not dealing with it anymore. But uh, I appreciate all the comments, though, because now I know that you look at them. <laughs> so that's good. You do look at those emails. Uh, but uh, I unfortunately just wasn't able to get that out yesterday. So uh, look for it, hopefully, next week. With that, uh, everything you need to know for the service is in the bulletin uh, or on the screen. May God bless our time together as he has gathered us here once again to receive his good gifts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, yes, for bringing us here into this place. We thank you for the good gifts that you have for us, the promises that you have to give us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Send your Spirit to us. Guide us in all truth, strengthen our faith, and may we leave in peace. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Behold, how good and pleasant it is. It is like precious oil on the head. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In holy baptism, we were united in the body of Christ, the church. He continually asks the Father that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. He gave his life so that nothing shall separate us from the uniting love of God. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
verses 12 through 26. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called, in their own language, Akadama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Christ is risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. Descendant of David, 
the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia! We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Jesus said, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them, even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated for our hymn of the day.
gospel text this morning, we get to listen in to what is often referred to as Jesus' high priestly prayer. Uh, John chapter 17 records the entire prayer, which Jesus prayed in the presence of his disciples in the upper room on Monday, Thursday. But this morning, we're only looking at those seven verses that are in our text. And I want to start by stepping back. Stepping back from the actual words of the prayer for a minute and pause to consider the bigger picture of what's happening at this moment. What is Jesus doing? He's praying. Doesn't that seem strange to you? And I, I don't mean strange or weird in the sense of like trying to understand how he's praying, you know, the Godhead, uh, Jesus praying to his Father, two separate persons, of one triune God. I, I don't mean in that sense. What I mean is Jesus didn't need to pray. Think about it. Jesus is God, right? He is God in human flesh and blood, and he has power. The disciples have seen this power on full display. He's turned water into wine. He's calmed storms. He's cast out demons. He's healed the sick. He made the lame to walk. He gave sight to the blind. I remember this is Monday, Thursday. This is upper room. Uh, just before this, remember what he did with this guy named Lazarus who was in the tomb? Lazarus, get out. He raised him from the dead. Jesus certainly had power. His disciples certainly saw it. So why is Jesus praying? Why is he bringing petitions to his Father? Doesn't he have the power to just do all of the things that he's asking for? Couldn't he just say the word and exercise his power? Yes. But he chooses not to. Instead of doing those things on his own, he chooses instead to, to pray. The Son of God chooses to bring these requests to his Father. That, that should give us some pause. Why is he doing that? That's why I'm, I'm having us just take a quick step back for a minute to consider the mystery of this moment. Jesus is praying. Why? There's something more going on. Something more important than the petitions that he prays, and even as the events of the next day would clearly show, something more important than life itself. Above it all, Jesus holds a dear his relationship with his father. They are one, as he says and prays. One God with the Holy Spirit now and forever, as we like to end our prayers. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Father, and the Son has come to do the Father's will. For example, if you go back in the Gospel of John, because our text comes from the Gospel of John, if you go back to chapter 4, Jesus met a woman at the well in Samaria. This is the Samaritan woman at the well. Uh, and his disciples, they went to go into the town to get some grub. And when they come back, they meet with Jesus. They see him talk with this gal. And they try to get him to eat. And Jesus responds, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. And then you got two chapters later, John chapter 6. Jesus had just fed the 5,000. Um, and if you remember, they, uh, he fed the 5,000. He travels to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They go after him because they're looking for their next meal. So they follow him. And that next morning, uh, Jesus says to that crowd, All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Those are just two examples, but 
you see, Jesus has been saying it all along. And, and now here in the upper room, as we take a step back, we realize what's going on. We see this mysterious, remarkable moment. We see it in a very powerful way. Jesus holds dear his relationship with his Father. It's at the heart of who he is. His life is lived in this intimate relationship. He seeks and he does the Father's will. And he entrusts everything. He even commits, as the next day would show, his spirit into his Father's hands. Now let's turn to the words of this prayer. What does Jesus pray for? Well, now it becomes a little clear. He's praying that you would have the same intimacy with the Father that he has with the Father. Jesus prayed for us that they, and this is not just the disciples who are listening in, because it's they who have come to believe through their word. That's us, those who have heard the promises of God, who have come to faith through the promises by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's us, that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be in us. I think it's ironic and astonishing that Jesus prays this prayer on the night that he was betrayed. There's anything but unity, anything but uh, intimacy that night. Jesus went out, uh, Judas, excuse me, he went out to betray Jesus. The disciples all deserted him. Uh, Peter denied him. The people he loves would demand his death. In every way, Jesus would face the cross alone. But that was the plan from the beginning. That was the Father's good plan, the Father's good will. On the cross, Jesus would die for the sins of the world. Everything that separated us from God. The third stanza of uh, stricken, smitten, and afflicted always hits home here. Ye who think of sin but lightly, nor suppose the evil great, here may view its nature rightly, here its guilt may estimate. Mark the sacrifice appointed, see who bears the awful load. Tis the word, the Lord's anointed, son of man, and Son of God. Our sin is an awful load. And Jesus bore it. And he bore it all for you because he loves you, because the Father loves you. The cross is the beautiful proof of that love. God absolutely refused to let your sin, to let your rebellion, to let that awful load stand in the way of intimacy with you. He's not going to let anything get in the way of life with you. Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 32, when he's talking uh, to religious authorities, he says that when he is lifted up, that is when he is crucified, he will, quote, draw all people to himself. That's what exactly what he did. But through his death, there's reconciliation with God. You are drawn into that relationship with God. When, when Jesus, by faith, by your baptism, drew you into his death and resurrection, he drew you into relationship with him. You have that. And when he brought you into relationship with him, I and the Father are one, he brought you into relationship with the Father. Your relationship with the Father, dear friends, is just as sure and certain and set as Jesus' relationship with the Father because you are in Christ by faith, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the promises of God spoken to you in word, water, bread, and wine. You are in Christ. Therefore, you are in Him. Or in God as well. You have that relationship. You see, without the promises of God, 
without the forgiveness of sins not proclaim to you the, the promise of that reconciliation, that repaired, reconciled relationship because of Christ's atoning sacrifice, uh, the promise of the resurrection of the dead, uh, the love of God proclaimed to you. If, if all that's not sure, if that's not uh, proclaimed to you, then one of the major practical casualties is prayer. Without the promises, prayer becomes a sort of transaction. This is how the world kind of sees prayer, right? Uh, as a transaction, um, something that we might do only when we're in great need or when we've discovered that we're powerless to do anything about a certain situation or problem. Don't get me wrong. Turning to God in prayer during those times is not a bad thing. This is a very good thing, of course. It's a beautiful thing. What I'm saying is that we pray because we've been brought into relationship with God. There's Jesus, right, in the upper room, praying. He holds dear the relationship with his Father. And I might even say it this way. He prays because of that relationship. Everything he does, he entrusts to his Father, even his own life. When he's alone and forsaken on the cross, literally alone on the cross, in pain and suffering beyond our imagination at the point of death, what does he say? Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He commends his very life into his Father's hands with the assurance that Easter's coming. And it did, didn't it? And so we pray, not just in times of need, but at all times. Not because it somehow earns us some spiritual brownie points <laughs> or gets us in good with the big man upstairs. Have you heard that before? Or anything like that. Prayer is not a transaction. It's not a, you do this and God will do that. If we say the right words, God will do whatever it is we ask. For us, friends, dear friends, for those of us who have been brought into the triune God through the words spoken to us, prayer is the heartbeat of our relationship with our God who loves us. The Father holds dear his relationship with his Son. And so he holds dear his relationship with you through his Son. You are his child, yeah? By baptism? Yes. He gives you access that only a child would have to his or her father. I think, right? Romy. Uh, there's no other kid has access to me like, like Romy does. Right? There's a, a relationship there that, that doesn't exist anywhere else. You've been brought into that father, son, father, daughter relationship with God. The God of the universe who loves you. Your graciously heavenly father who knows what you need, who is for you, who loves you, who hears and listens and knows. And he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for you, how will he not also with him graciously give you all things? When we have the promises of God in Jesus, when that foundation is firmly planted, sin is forgiven, death defeated, relationship restored, secure, finished, then prayer can be seen rightly. Prayer can be seen for what it is. It is beautiful as the heartbeat of our relationship with God. I think this is a good word, a good encouragement for today. Um, when prayer, at least outside of these walls, uh, in news and media, or wherever you're talking to, when prayer is put down, when prayer is seen as useless, mostly because it's seen as a transaction, when, said, uh, when you hear something said like, Prayer is not working. Something like that. Prayer is not work. Prayer is not doing any good. Is that not transaction talk? Right? And this is what prayer is. It's not this magical 
transaction prayer works is not really our mindset. Prayer is what we do because we have this relationship. We have a God who loves us. God has brought us into himself. And so we entrust even the really bad, horrible, hard things of this world into his hands. So I encourage you, friends, to continue to do that. To continue to bring everything to him because our whole lives, all of it, is lived in that blood-bought relationship. So may God strengthen our assurance in his promises that we may have joy and peace and confidence in bringing all things to our good and gracious Heavenly Father in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our Lord has ascended and now fills all time and space, both with us here and also at the Father's right hand. As we anticipate our joining him in eternity, let us bring him our petitions for the needs we have in this day. For leaders of the church, that they have courage to proclaim the gospel to the world around us in every circumstance, and that they seek God's guidance in their work as we confess our faith in the one Savior of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of the nations, that God would guide them in the ways of peace for all international relief agencies, that they're able to meet the needs of refugees due to human and natural disasters, and for all who work to discover ways to use God's creation for the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who tend fields and flocks, who minister to the sick and dying, and go in harm's way to order society and to ensure freedom, that God would protect and guide them, using them for the nourishment, health, and concord we need each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those near and dear to us with problems of health, where welfare, sorrow, unemployment, or other concerns, including Jane Wicks, Allison, Chris Turner, Barbara Stanison, Donald Blakes Jr., Greg and Karen Lucas, Anita Heaton, Dick Bowens, Doris Ulysses, Kelvin Tong, Erica Brody, David Anton, Carol Roach, Marilyn Stone, Charlie Stone, Paul Albertson, Rocco Campanelli, Kevin and Leah Franciani, John Matern, Michael Kratz, Matthew Sirico, Lisa, Chris, and Olivia, Abigail, Hope, Lisa, Norman Lambie, Bill, Jennifer Christopherson, Christopher DePalma, Kathy Kern, Monica Peschel, Natalie Piper, Alicia Kiss, Ella Famulero, Gordon Stanison, family and friends grieving in Evaldi, Texas, and those we name in our hearts.
God would provide healing, consolation, and relief as fits his gracious plan for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church around the world and for ourselves, gathered here around word and sacrament as a family of faith, for the families of each congregation, and for every individual of faith, that the unity we share as members of the body of Christ would show forth in our forgiving and loving one another. In Jesus' name, let us pray to the Lord. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is one God with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our offering. Christ our Lord, 
who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples, and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Now may this true body and this true blood strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith now until life everlasting. Depart in peace. We stand.
stories 